Jackson goes and replaces the, those authority figures with government, with police, with, uh, with bosses at their job, with money, pretty much anything that uh, can be a vice of some sort that gives that person the feeling of the identity that they've always had. Because if they've never truly identified with being self-regulating, self-governing, self-responsible, then their, their entire identity, everything that they have ever built their life around, is all in accordance with having somebody above them in that pyramid structure, somebody above them that they have to kind of watch out for if they do anything wrong, but then they could also run to them if they need protection of some sort. So in a sense, uh, that's why I use that quote a lot. If we base our identity on identifying with authority, then freedom causes anxiety. And if you look at the world today, I mean, ob obviously what we see today is people say they want freedom, but it's, it's doublespeak because their actions don't meet with their words because they haven't defined what freedom truly is. They think freedom is comfort, but they're only comfort with authority above them. So it, it really is a form of really um, doublespeak in, in, like, in not being able to truly, truly communicate with ourselves in a way. So true freedom, and this is what I've noticed in my work, is true freedom tends to cause people great angst and great anxiety. So when, um, in a shamanic experience, for one, when you have a feeling of complete loss, uh, uh, an ego collapse, or a loss of identity, or in some sense, a loss of all the vices and all of the things that once gave you a feeling of self, a, a feeling of identity in some way, it's a great feeling of anxiety. It's almost like an anxiety attack. You feel as if you're dying in some way. Ben, but, I, had, I had that happen to me yeah. on, on, on Salvia Divinorum. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought I was going to lose it. I was freaking out. And, you know, because I felt myself, my person, the thing mm -hmm. that I thought was me, starting to slip from my reality. And I panicked, just as you're saying. And it was a very frightening thing to and, – but then I sat and I questioned. I wondered, well, all right, if, if this thing that I think is me did suddenly vanish as it felt like it was going to, what was left? What was the body running around still living? Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's honestly um, – I've traveled down to South America several times, um, and I have um, – I've taken part in several ayahuasca ceremonies, and – I can I can say personally, trying not to get too much into my personal experience, but I can say that what I have noticed, at least from other people's experiences, my own experiences, and just not even through um, a method of uh, authentic shamanism, but even in a sense of everyday life, in any you know scenario in our lives where we feel things aren't going the way that we think they should, if we have a standard or an expectation such as, you know, a specific grade in school or a way that a significant other should treat us or the way that our family should be, um, should be taking care of us monetarily. or It doesn't matter what it is. When things don't meet our standard, we feel a loss of control. We feel that we don't have control over that situation. And then what happens is we start to, what should be happening at that point is we should start realizing what we truly do have control over and what we don't have control over. But the, the, the sick and like the twisted form of what this false ego really does employ in the body is it, it will switch one vice and it will replace it with another. And what that vice tends, uh, tends to do is say you'll leave one form of bondage and hop right into another prison. And the, you know, the, the, uh, the hidden, like the more esoteric way of looking at that is the fact that we don't realize it because we don't want true freedom. I mean, we can say it all we want. You know, we, we want to be free. We want to be independent. But if we don't mean it deep down inside, then on a topical level, on the ego level, on the persona level, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, you know, you know we've, we've come wise to the fact that this is something that we don't want. So something else, some other form of vice some other form of bondage, something that we can identify ourselves with as an authority figure, we need to come up with something a bit more esoteric. So everything that we typically do, if we're not truly focusing on the fact that of what uh, true freedom is, we'll keep hopping from one form of slavery to another. And that's when you see people will 
lose their faith in a specific religion and find uh, comfort in another, or find it in science, or find it in a New Age religion, or lose faith in the Republican side and, and switch to the uh, Democratic side or the Libertarian side, or just choose to opt out and not even be a part of the political spectrum. And you see it all the time, but typically what people are doing is they're replacing, like I said, we're replacing one form of bondage with another, and as I was saying with the shamanic experience, it just that really just cuts it down to the core because it well, doesn't it's it's not even intellectual in a sense. You can't even really understand what it is that you're feeling at that moment, but you are losing the control and the identity that you thought you once had. And like you said, what what is left after that? Well, and we're gonna get right into that. Uh, we're coming up on a break, so uh, that's a good spot to stop because, uh, yeah, we're gonna get to the self and 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 the ego and start to understand. Uh, so coming up on the other side, we're gonna look into submitting your application for registration. Are you owned? Are you owned by the, uh, your birth certificate, by the Federal Reserve, and by Admiralty Law? That's coming up on the other side of the break. This is the Free Zone with my great guest Ben Stewart. So wordplay is uh, a master art of our leaders, of those that have created our civilization around us, the, the rules that we tend to live by, the ones that we believe we have to exist with. And wordplay is uh, something that is very critical to understanding life around us. Um, the ideas of that are created from words, from the concepts that come from words. And you can see that, the say, the Freemasons are masters of this uh, in that Noah Webster's creation of the dictionary, a uh, fine Freemason, Noah Webster, and he decides uh, what words are okay and which ones aren't. And this whole practice of dictionaries uh, then limits the concepts that people can use. But there is a whole other word play that goes on, and that is the legal word play or the language of law, which is just totally foreign, even though it seems to be the same language we're speaking. Um, it isn't. And when you start to submit your application for registration so that you can get certification, which I'd like to mention that, you know, that for the constitution of corporations, all of these words are French, uh, <laughs> curious enough. So, Ben, uh, this idea of admiralty law and the idea of the concepts of these rules that we think we're under, we think we bound by, and are presented to us that our family just goes along with, and everyone gets a birth certificate, everyone registers their cells into this system. Uh, is this the, the true law of the land? Uh, well, absolutely it's not, and... Um I really put, um, especially within the last year, I put a lot of time into studying the difference between law and l the legal system. And what I've noticed is, I mean, there are several different types of law, um, but really the, the main ones that I get into is, is civil law, you know, the law of the land. And then there's um, this thing called maritime admiralty law, which I get into a lot more and I try to at least expose the fact that it is corporate law. It is law that's based on commerce. It's not. It has nothing to do with human beings, um, individuals at all. It has to do with corporations, subcorporations, subsidiaries. That's really all it has to do with. It. It all has to do with pa pieces of paper with just signatures on it, and that's really it. And I always like see said, these things. I'm sorry to interrupt. But I always <laughs> see those things as as a form of magic. You know, that's that's exactly what you would define as magic is to write out this, uh, you know, treatise, this grimoire, put your magic signature on it. And all of a sudden it's real. You know, there's nothing real about a corporation. There's nothing real about most of the system that guides our world today, but sorry, uh, go on. Well, no, that's, that's absolutely true. And, um, I mean, the idea of word magic is, it's a perfect way to put it because it really is, um, it's using the English language, and this is the most deceptive thing I have I've been able to really um, exploit because it's it's in everybody's face. You know, not everybody is uh, involved in the occult. Not everybody's interested in um, top political matters, things along those lines. But 
everybody has a run in with the law at some point, whether whether it's you know a, a traffic ticket or uh, something a little bit more serious. Everybody is right in their face, and it's really easy to explain just to the average person that listen. Like, do you understand that when a cop says, "Do you understand?" They're asking, do you stand under admiralty law? They're not asking, it's not a, um, I should say, it's not a, an English way of saying it. It's a legalese way of saying it. It's a way of um, 